Hello and welcome to the next episode in A Beginner's Guide to Paramex Discovery. My name is Malcolm Calvert and today we'll be bringing you episode 5 in the series. Now if you haven't seen the first four episodes, I would recommend that you go and find those on our YouTube channel and have a look because we will be very much building from where we left off last time. So let's begin today's episode using the same model that we've been working on so far. Now last time we started to look at how to code junctions in Paramix Discovery and we focused in on a priority junction and that was this junction in the model here. And if you remember, we set the priorities. We also looked at the curb positions and the lane point positions. So today we're going to move on to the next junction, which we can find in our models here. And this junction is going to be quite different because this is a signal control junction. So we're going to learn today how to code traffic signals into our model. So the first thing to do when we're coding a signal control junction is to select the node at that junction and go to the signal editor. So if I select node four in my model, I can access the signal editor in two ways. I can either go to the edit network menu and signals, and that will bring up my signals editor. And the other option is to right click on the node and choose edit signals from that drop down menu. Okay, so this brings me to my signal editor, which is a blank canvas initially. Now, the first thing I want to do in here is click add on the left hand side. And that will create uh, what we call a time frame and also some stage diagrams. Now, by default, the time frame is 24 hours of the day. And as you go through the process of developing your signal control junction, you can add in as many time frames as you want, starting and ending at whatever times. And of course, that's very important because we know that in real life and in our models, the signal timings change by time of day. What we also get on this screen is the stage diagram. And by default, we've got two stages. That's the minimum number of stages you can have at a signal control junction, but it's very easy to add some more. Now at this junction, we're going to have four stages and I can uh, change two to four by simply clicking add stage a couple of times here. And we can see now that I've got four stages to work with. Now by clicking on a specific stage, you can see uh, it draws a box around the edge and that tells me which stage I'm going to be working in at any given time. So the next thing I want to do to develop my signal control junction is to assign some phases. And I do that using uh, a button in the bottom left hand corner called assign phases. So I'll click on that. Now when we're assigning phases, what we're effectively doing is grouping certain movements together that will be controlled by the same traffic signal. So it's very common for a traffic signal to control, for example, all the movements coming from one approach arm or another. So let's say that all of these three movements here have the same phase. What I would do is click on a letter on the left hand side. Let's start with A and then hover over that movement and click on it to assign the phase. So what we're saying is that everything coming from node 18 to node 4 on this approach will be controlled by the same traffic light. And that's going to be the same for the different approaches. So I'm going to make phase B the opposite side of the road, C coming from the north and D from the south. And what you'll have noticed as I've been assigning the phases in this diagram is that they're also appearing in the stage diagram in my main signals editor. So I've now assigned every movement at this junction to a different phase. The next thing I want to do is to define which phases appear in which stages. And that will help to start to structure the order of the traffic signals at the junction. So I'll close my phases dialog and go back to my main signals editor here. 
Now there's two ways that I can define which phase happens in which stage. One is to click on the arrowheads as I uh, did in the phases diagram. And another is to click in this uh, phase sequence diagram down here. So if I click a plus beside phase B, I can see that it's switched on here and the arrows appear in my stage diagram. So let's assign phase C in stage two, I'll click on the arrowheads, and then in stage three, I'll assign phase D in this manner. Now stage four, I'm going to leave blank because that will be a pedestrian phase. So we won't have any traffic movements on the road during stage four. Now, what you might have noticed as we've been adding the phases into our stages is the different colors that have appeared in our phase sequence on the diagram at the bottom here. And we can see that they're made up of three blocks. There's a red amber, there's a green, and then an amber at the end. Now, most of the time is made up of green, as you would expect on a stage. The red amber and the amber are the UK standards for traffic signals. The red amber being two seconds at the start and the amber being three seconds at the end. Now, those are settings that apply across the model, but you can uh, change them if you need to. When we look at the tooltip, uh, as we're hovering over one of these phases, we can see when the phase will start, when it will end, and what the phase green time is. Now we can adjust all of that by changing the stage length in our stage diagram up here. So let's say I extend the stage length to 36 seconds instead of 30. This has expanded and the phase green is now 31 seconds instead of 25. We can also apply an all red phase to our stages and we do that with this button and as I apply that you can see that a red time is appearing and that's increasing the intergreen between uh, phases in different stages. So I'm just going to change some of the timings now, we'll make that stage length 36 I'm going to reduce C to 19 um, and D to 19 in stage three as well. And in stage four, um, we'll make that 16. Now, as I've been changing those timings, the cycle length has changed. So we can see the total cycle length here is 90 seconds. Okay, so we've assigned our phases to different stages and we've set the timings of those stages. Now we also need to think about the timings between phases and that's known as the intergreen. So that's the time when one phase turns off, the green ends and another one begins. Now by default, we have a five second intergreen in our model. You can see that because we've got the three seconds of amber and the two seconds of red amber at the end and the start of the different stages. But sometimes that intergreen will be more than five seconds. And we can edit that using this button down here called Edit Intergreens. It's a simple matrix and all we need to do is click on a cell and put a value in. So let's say I'm looking at the intergreen between A and C. I would click on this cell and I'm going to increase that from 5 to 8. Okay, now what you'll notice in the diagram down here is that I've got a red line now drawn between A and C, which shows that I've manually input a particular intergreen. Now, the reason it's a red line is because my phase sequence is only got five seconds in it but my intergreen needs to be eight. So what I need to do is select my uh, phase, in this case, phase C, and drag the bar until the line becomes green. So now I can see with that extra time built in of a few seconds, I've got an eight second intergreen between phase A and phase C. 
So that was by dragging phase C forward. I could also click on phase A and drag that backwards to finish it early. And again, I've got my eight second intergreen. So by changing the phase sequence diagram, I can check that I'm meeting the requirements of my intergreen matrix that I've set up in here. Okay, so there's a couple more things we want to do to complete the signal control junction. And this will refresh a little bit of what we covered in episode four, when we looked at the priority junction. Because it's important that we think about the priorities at a signal control junction as well. If we take stage one, for example, we can see that the approach from node 18, which is phase A, and from node 6, which is B, are running at the same time. Now we know if these are running at the same time, then the right turn from stage A and the right turn from stage B will need to be giving way to the straight ahead movements from the other phase. So to do that, in the same way as we did yesterday, we simply click on the arrowheads to cycle through the different priorities. So I want to make this right turn a medium priority, which means that it's giving way to the three movement of B. And I'm going to click on this right turn. I'm actually going to make that barred because in this particular model, the right turn is barred and it's not allowed for any vehicles. So you can change the priority of a movement in a signal control junction in the same way as you can on any other junction by simply clicking on the arrowheads. Okay, so we've covered quite a lot about the signals editor there, but of course there is more that you can explore. So I would encourage you to do that, to have a play around with it and see how you get on. But we're gonna close this down for now and just go back to the junction on our main network because there's a few things we still need to tidy up here. And two of the key ones are curbs and lane points, which we covered in episode four. So I'm gonna quickly switch those on my curbs and my lane points on this toolbar at the top. And in my styles, I'm going to turn my tarmac off. And then I'm going to just edit these as we go. Now the curbs are important to edit to improve the geometry of the junction. And you can see that I'm getting a much better match between my coded network and the overlay by moving some of those curves. And the lane points are very important for the swept path through the junction. And again, we can see those more clearly by turning our trajectories on using the hotkey T. The lane points are also really important and particularly the signal control junction for correctly defining the position in which vehicles will stop. And you can see I'm dragging uh, the lane points back on the approaches to the junction in particular. Now, what you might notice is there's no trajectory line from this right turn here. And that's because, if you remember, we made that movement barred. But I've now got no traffic using lane two, which isn't correct. So to address that, what I would do is click on the movement again. And if you remember, we looked at this in episode four where we could set the different priorities. This time I want to click on my uh, this button here, which will switch the lane on and off. So for this straight ahead movement, I'm switching lane two on and I want to switch it off in lane one. So we can see the trajectory line disappears. So now I've got a straight ahead movement in lane two and lane one for the left turn, which is how I want to set this junction up. Now the very final thing that we're gonna look at at this junction, I'm just gonna position that lane point first, is to do with this right turn movement here. Now, the way this is coded at the minute, the vehicles doing that right turn will stop at this location. And that's correct, when the, let, when the light is red, we want them to stop here. But when our light goes green, they're going to move into the junction 
and weight here. So we've actually got two different weighting points for this right turn movement. And we can address that by left clicking on the lane point and choosing this option, make stacking. Now by making stacking, I get a brand new lane point, which I can drag forward and this lane point now is where vehicles will wait when the light is green. So they'll still stop here when it's red, but they'll wait here when it's green. So we've covered an awful lot in this episode looking at signal control junctions and how to code them. And in a couple of episodes time, when we get traffic on the network, we'll be able to see this signal control junction in action. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and learned a lot from it and we look forward to seeing you next time.